All right. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back from this, uh, this uh, nice shortened break. I know everyone here has been having some, uh, some Wi-Fi problems. Luckily, my demo never had any Wi-Fi. In fact, it's the anti-Wi-Fi uh, uh, platform to be showing off here. Uh, so we'll completely avoid that and show you how you can really build the peer web. So the peer web itself isn't exactly new. Uh, but it's really come to light, especially given privacy concerns, when we're seeing daily data breaches on, uh, on a lot of your accounts that you see today. Uh, and what's worse is when, when you see uh, such government leaks uh, of data, such as WikiLeaks, Edward Snowden, and so forth, you're wondering, who has my data and what are they doing with it? Oh yeah, did you bother to read that, uh, that user agreement? I didn't. Maybe that's my own fault. Uh, but what we're going to do today is really put that, that, that sense of you can put the data back in your own hands and really, really control it. So I kind of like to, to start off with a little bit of a, an alternative title as I uh, normally like to do. Uh, and this is in the, uh, the vein of Dr. Strangelove. Uh, in the fact of having an alternative title is always great, is how I stopped learning to wor uh, worry about internet connection and learn to love the pure web. So, I, yeah, I could do the whole slim pickings, but nah, no, I'm not going to do that with a wizard hat. Anyways, uh, you might wonder, why Microsoft? Why am I interested in such a thing? Why are we interested in this idea of the pure web? You know, obviously everyone's focused on the internet of things, cloud, and so forth. But why the pure web? So we, we as a company are actually pointing in many, uh, many different ways about talking about the next generation of communication and democratizing communication for everybody, no matter where they are, whether no matter their social, economic uh, background, et cetera. And yes, I like to think of uh, bringing a little bit of metal back to Microsoft here. Uh, so who am I? Well, I am, uh, I am part of a, uh, a group called uh, DX, or Developer Experience at Microsoft, and I am a self-described open sourcer in that I've been working with Node uh, since pretty much the 0.2 time frame, and I was uh, instrumental in working with Ryan Dahl in making sure that Node worked on Windows. Uh, so I'm pretty unoriginal. If you can find me in one place, you can find me in another place. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, now let's really talk about the Internet of Things. Now when we talk about the Internet of Things, it's really all things, right? It's not just these little devices, it's every little thing that we're doing. It's whether it's your connected refrigerator, whether it's uh, your thermostat, uh, whether it's these small little devices that you have, any number of those things is pretty much part of the Internet of Things. But when you get down to it, a lot of these things like the Nest and, and, the, uh, and, and the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, when it comes to perfect co connectivity and really democratizing everything for everyone, I don't think it's all that interesting. Because really they, what they expect is to have perfect connectivity and uh, at a certain socioeconomic level in order to actually uh, be able to use these uh, at a certain point. So really what we want to do is we want to democratize at a different level. And what that level happens to be is your phone. Your phone happens to be the number one piece of the Internet of, of Things uh, technologies to be able to control the world and control your data with just a single device. Yeah, it's kind of weird, a Microsoft guy sitting up here with a Nexus 6, but uh, so be it. Uh, and, and, and no less developing on a Mac. Um, but what I, what I really want to get through to you is the fact that these devices right now are very, very powerful. They have a lot of compute power, they have a lot of storage, but also they have the ab ability to communicate in any number of different ways that we can take advantage of. So I really want you to dream big throughout this presentation about what we can do with the peer web and making things available to the wider public whether it's uh, an iPhone or an Android. It, let's just see a, how many people have an iPhone or an Android in here, a uh, device. Okay, that's a good 95% of the audience, if not more. Uh, so what if we took it to these two platforms first and see how people react to this? Let's really dream big and take on these hard challenges. 
For example, we could think about industrial IoT, for example. Now, in industrial IoT, you have a number of, of really interesting problems. Uh, for example, if you're trying to make sure that all of your uh, machines are working perfectly, uh, you could uh, retrofit your entire factory with Wi-Fi, and that would cost millions of dollars, uh, and then you would have to keep upgrading that every so often. Or you could uh, somehow convince a cell phone company to build a tower outside of there. Once again, not great, because if you're on a certain other side of the building, you're not going to be able to communicate. So how would I be able to send videos, send pictures, to say there's something wrong with a machine at some point? How do you do that? And it's all about how we make this, run, this factory run an optimal level. But it's also how we improve lives through communication. No matter your socioeconomic background, what you want to do is you want to be able to improve these people's lives through commodity things that you can buy today. And they don't necessarily have to sit on the internet because, once again, chances are there's not an internet or cellular available in a lot of these places, but yet phones are easily available. You can buy. Uh, and then you can buy data plans really cheaply. But we don't need data plans to really be successful. And really going beyond that, let's just, like I said, dream really big here. What if we could save lives because of uh, the Internet of Things? Now, yes, I know this sounds a little grandiose, but at the same point, there are, there are plenty of times when uh, there are people that, that use social media, use Wi-Fi technologies and so forth, that it can be easily be intercepted by people, which compromises you and compromises everybody around you. Wouldn't you rather have the ability to control all of that on your own with those people that you trust? That's the kind of challenge I'm putting out to you. Can we do that together? And the answer is yes, we can. Now, how do we build that? You know, because obviously we're going to have to have a lot of little Lego blocks here and there about how we build this thing together. And so what we started with is this thing called Node, of course, that uh, everybody uh, seems to be thinking about. Uh, we believe uh, that Node is our entire solution in the fact that it can run pretty much anywhere low footprint in terms of, of installing it on any device. And not only is the, uh, the base library uh, pretty decent enough, but just as the previous speaker mentioned, there are a lot of modules out there that do a lot of the things that we need to do to really make this uh, a, a factor for creating this, this idea of this peer web uh, together. Uh, now, what do we do in terms of data synchronization, for example? So if we're building these kinds of apps, what we want to do is we want to have automatic data synchronization. Well, with that, we have the, a solution already out there called PouchDB. And now PouchDB is a uh, port of the, uh, the CouchDB semantics that can be put on a device such as this. Now, what that allows us to do is automatically, through a number of bridges, we can start to communicate from this device here to that device there, all throughout direct communication, just over HTTP. That's all it takes. And what's great about that is it knows how, which, uh, which database is on which version and so forth. Now, security obviously is a, is a big, big concern here. Uh, because uh, how do you actually uh, make a system that is very, very secure, but yet not a pain to use? Now, I, I've actually found this, uh, this great sign here at a, uh, a local castle, which I thought was kind of, uh, uh, kind of a pretty awesome uh, uh, picture. But really, what are we going to do? Well, it's going to be public key. So everybody who gets an app gets, to put it, uh, gets a public key installed when they create an application. And then what we do is we, we, co we converse over TOS so to make sure that everything that goes across the wire is encrypted. So anyone who's trying to listen in to, to your stuff doesn't really work for them. And not only that, but we have everything that will be on the device encrypted as well. Now how do we exchange, like I said, now that public key that we had really becomes your identity. Who are you? And so what we can do is we can uh, uh, we implement something uh, that we would call the, uh, the coin flip uh, commitment protocol. So we're basically inventing a protocol or a variation of, 
of Bluetooth. And so what we were originally looking at is say, oh, QR codes, they're, they're pretty ubiquitous and all of that. So, but, you know, it's a real pain, so if I had to, you know, sit here and, 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 and scan these two things together, it's really a pain in the rear. Uh, instead, uh, what could we do uh, about creating a system that's much, much easier that we're all very, very used to? So what we're going to do is we're going to implement this coin flipping system uh, that, uh, that has a little bit of attack vector, but you're talking one in a million here. And when you think about when you think about the radius of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi Direct, you're you're talking about one in a million. So say even if you're in a stadium of 65,000, 100,000 people, you're not going to run into that million. Chances are it's not going to happen. Uh, but now let's say let's go a little bit further here. Now I want to uh, to protect against a uh, person in the middle attacks. Uh, you could call it man in the middle, but uh, let's not. Uh, now say we both have our generated keys and we want to exchange them back and forth. Uh, we can go ahead and do so, uh, and then we also do a lot of uh, checks to make sure that there is no person trying to inject their uh, their uh, certificates halfway through uh, the event. Now, the constraint that we have in all of this is obviously there is no cell phone infrastructure nor Wi-Fi infrastructure that we can do to use this. So how can we really make it so that people just don't hate us? <laughs> well, the answer is actually fairly simple. We want a Bluetooth-like experience here. All we have to do is basically when I say, okay, I'm going to open, a, uh, open an application, I'm going to click this individual, and I'm going to send, say, Sue's and Cass a message. Well, in order for us to actually send a message back and forth, we will want to basically say, I got the code 123456. Did you get that? Okay, we're good. Now we are trusted, uh, we are trusted partners. We can communicate successfully. And the same would go for Cass. There's your 654321. Great. That is awesome. We want that kind of experience you know, because people are very used to the Bluetooth experience already. Now the bigger challenge actually is, is we want Node to run on every device. Now as you have uh, seen with, uh, with Node going forward, what we have is we have obviously we have Mac, we have Linux, uh, we have Windows, and we have uh, various uh, flavors of ARM. But we don't have this, do we? Well, with JX Core, we actually do. Now, JX Core is a uh, is a port of uh, of uh, nodes in and around the, the zero ten uh, um, area, and what that is trying to do is add on a lot of different value add kind of things to to Node itself, including uh, multi threading tasks and so forth. But I think what what's more interesting is as well as you know, creating desktop applications and so forth. Uh, using Node itself. But here's another interesting aspect. They are the first ones to be able to put into the, uh, into the, Apple, uh, the App Store an actual Node application running on your iPhone. They are the first ones. And not only that, but to the, if you read the description here, you can show uh, your shopping list and you can share it over Wi-Fi. Those are those kinds of, of, of things that, it's, uh, that are totally available to you. And this is all just basically using Cordova and JX Core together uh, over Wi-Fi. That's all it is. And just for you that are using uh, 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 Android, it's also available there as well. So if you go to uh, uh, Google Play and look for uh, Wi-Fi shop list, you can find it there. So that's really, really cool. It opens up Node to a whole new level where we never had seen it before. Now we have it so that you could, you could take and create apps, uh, open peer web apps in the App Store and in Play today. Now, like I said, the cloud, especially here, can be a little overrated. But what if we have no cloud? What if we're in those kinds of situations of whether it's you know, socioeconomic and so forth, that we just don't have the cloud? Well, this picture here is kind of apt because what we're having here is our bunch of uh, you know, our balloons uh, representing our devices that we can just mesh together and send data back and forth to. No cloud required. But how do we do that? 
Well, we have the technology. Of course, we have the technology of, with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that are built into pretty much every phone that comes out nowadays. And what's really cool is the fact that, for example, on Android, what we can do is we can uh, use Wi-Fi Direct or Bluetooth uh, Low Energy to do discovery of other uh, application, uh, peer web applications near us. And then we could actually switch over to using Bluetooth to actually do all the data synchronization. Yes, Bluetooth is a very lossy thing, it drops quite often. But at the same point, we can, we can use these technologies to really create a really amazing solution. And on, the, uh, on iOS, we also can do the same kind of thing. For example, we can take the Wi-Fi connectivity framework, and then we can, uh, we can meld that together to say, okay, that's the discovery mechanism, and then you start using Bluetooth to start sending data back and forth between the devices. So what did we do? We created this project called the Tali Project. Now, Tali uh, is, uh, is an Indian or Nepalese dish made of uh, uh, various dishes, according, and, and according to Indian Tali, is made up of six different, uh, different flavors, uh, and includes uh, salt, uh, sweet, bitter, sour, astringent, spicy, and so forth. Uh, and that's kind of the way we really kind of take on this kind of project, because what we're trying to do is not only give you the peer web, but add a lot of things on top of that, such as identity exchange, battery life cycle management, and so forth. Uh, we have a terrible logo, I realize this. Uh, it was literally done in Visio. I wish that were a joke. Uh, so if anyone has a really good idea for what represents Tali, I would love to hear it, uh, because our, our project lead who started the project is not a graphics designer, obviously. Uh, but we are here at the Tali Project, and you can follow along at taliproject.org and, uh, and our GitHub organization as well. And in there, we also have not only all, all of the research that we've done basically for this peer-to-peer uh, peer -peer experimental web, but we also have our stories that you can basically follow along with and say, what road mar our, our, where are we in our roadmap? So, for example, identity exchange, turning on the lights, making sure that iOS and Android can talk to each other. All of those things are going on right now. And you can actually sign up, join our mailing list, and so forth to actually follow along. And if you really are feeling brave enough, sure, dip your toes in. We would love to have contributions. Uh, we are certainly getting a lot from, uh, from human rights organizations, uh, the Guardian Project, as well as uh, a number of places. And where are we going from here? Well, we could certainly go to peer, me uh, peer mesh networking and, uh, and the Tor protocol. So re-implementing Tor in JavaScript is really kind of a neat idea. Uh, so the idea is that we can start to get around a lot of the, uh, the, the restrictions that local Wi-Fi and so forth give us, but not only that, but give you a real secure way of doing communication. Because once again, it's about saving lives. It's about enabling people to communicate. So to get started, that's all you got to do. JX, NPM, install Tali. That's it. Now, what we have here is we have an application uh, here called the postcard app. And what that does is, is it's a simple application that we can uh, sit here and we can write uh, notes to one another. So for example, I have a Nexus 6 and a Nexus 9. So for example, I, uh, I wrote some messages here where I, have a next, I wrote a message on my Nexus 6 and I synchronized it to my Nexus 9 and vice versa on my Nexus 9 I have the very same messages. All I had to do was just wait a little bit for Bluetooth uh, to kick in. That's it. You can get started with building these kinds of apps. We have demos in all of our GitHub repositories and so forth to really get started. And really, the ultimate, uh, uh, the ultimate goal I have is you know, change the world with software. Can we do it together? Thank you. Any questions? 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 No? All right. I have a question if you have time. Sure. I'm curious about JX4 and how that whole thing happened. 
Sure, sure. Uh, so JX Corp. So we were doing a lot of uh, a lot of talk to try and figure out who, uh, how we could get Node running on every device. The problem is we were like, well, most people looked at Spider Monkey and said, well, just throw Spider Monkey under Node and call it a day. Uh, but we really wanted someone who actually pays attention to this because a lot of those projects have been long abandoned. Nubisa is a company that we've been working very, very close with uh, that actually is actively involved with, with doing this and making sure that they're uh, on par with Node going forward. And it's free. Download. So, so any other questions? All right. Perfect. I'm out of time. Thank you.